Okay, well, welcome to part five, and this is the uh, color scheme I'm going to go with. I'm really not going to go beyond what I think this is. I like it, uh, what they came up with the color scheme for the Skultari, or not the Skultari, the Scourge. I keep getting those mixed up. But I'm going to go, this is a little bit lighter, but what I'm going to do, or this is darker than what I want, um, or what I'm going to start with. I'm going to do some chrome, which I got, uh, showed you in the last part. We're going to do base coats of chrome. This is what this looks like. I got it mixed with a little bit of uh, satin varnish. Trick I learned from um, painting Buddha. I'm just going to test it out as a thinner. See how it works uh, laying this down. And I think it's going to look cool. And then I'm going to use either a purple ink or a purple clear paint. I'm not sure yet. Got the Minotaur and Freak Flex from Badger above us. You can see that way on top there. There's some clear uh, paints. I might try those. I might get like a plastic spoon or something and go with that at first. And then um, I see how that works. Or maybe do a purple ink. Because I got the router Rayleigh and Doubter inks. And I got P3 inks. And I got every other ink you can imagine. Uh, I collect paint. So uh, I'm going to lay some of uh, this chrome down and see how it goes. Thanks. Okay, we're back. I'm mixing a little bit of the satin, of Leo satin varnish with the uh, paint, and I think it still might be a little too thick. So, um, I'm going to open some more varnish up. I'm just using some standard, it could probably any uh, liquid varnish you want. Just throw some drops in there. Two, three, four, five. I don't know why I picked that, but it felt good. This is really thinning the paint, it's keeping it together. There's no, uh, you can see there's no breakdown of the uh, pigment at all. This is gonna be pretty cool. So let's go try, with, let's go lay this out first. Uh, just turn on my compressor, which I forgot to do. Okay, it will load up. The airbrush. I got the. Uh, I'm still using the Patriot 105. We're not going to be doing any detail yet, so um, this will be a perfect brush to get this, especially big pigment out. These don't work good in my detail brushes. Uh, the pigment is sometimes a little too heavy. Let's start with these guys first. Try to get this nice on camera and see how this works. Nice. It sprays nice. It's going on really, really nicely. I think we're doing it one coat too. Oh, this is beautiful. You can't ask for better uh, paint behavior than that. That is just... Um, Really, really nice. The metallics lay them down perfectly. See how it looks on these tanks. Let to reload a little bit. Made a good amount. Uh, I'm doing these ground craft, ground craft first, and uh, I am just loving this. Uh, painting session with this stuff. The uh, satin varnish is uh, the key. Well, there's so many ways to thin paint, but I saw something on uh, Painting Buddha, and those guys don't play games with their painting. And uh, it was an airbrush they're doing on a, a war machine um, heavy war jack. And they were saying it just gives the paint a really good texture and it looks nice when it lays down. You have to admit that's beautiful. Um, I think it, um, using metallics on pre-shade, uh, I think it's going to hide a lot of it. But that's okay. I mean, this is covering amazingly well. Let's 
grab a um, where else I have to there's really not much to paint with this stuff. Um, let me get these out of the way. And we'll get a nice coat on these uh, transports. I think some of those shadows on the, those areas where I did the uh, pre shading is going to work out nicely. I don't have to worry about really getting the paint deep in there. And this paint is lasting a long time. That primer goes to this brush real quick. I had that thinned down quite a lot. This is um, really a, a still robust paint with all <clears throat> the varnish is not really, I mean, not breaking it down at all. You can see it's just going on like a dream. This I'm going to have to let dry for a while because I really want this paint to cure on the uh, flyers before I flip them over. I don't want to worry about, um, I might even do a tester's dull coat on it just to protect it or a, uh, yeah I'll do tester's dull coat on it because so you can bring it back up with um, some shot, um, pledge as a gloss coat. But I think I want to have these kind of dull looking and then just do, um, like, I believe, um, the Dave, the guy that owns Hawk War Games, does a little quick tutorial on YouTube how to paint these with a brush. Uh, roll down and dirty, but uh, effective paint job. And the uh, little eyes are all painted red, almost like a gem effect, and uh, glosses them. You don't miss any spots, so I have to worry about it and flip it. So those are cool. So we got all the vehicles. First coat. Um, I'm going to go in and I'll do this, uh, let these dry, and then uh, flip them over, and then carefully paint the bottoms of them. I might add a little dark to the... Uh, um, the bottoms, the very bottoms of them, just to just give it that little bit of effect. But I, if I do that, I will show it on video. If I don't, I'll just show these as they're finished and um, go from there. Thank you for joining me. Okay, we're back. What I'm doing is just pulling all these off gently. I'm gloving my hand up so I can handle them a little bit. Because these are, I mean, hard. There's no way I can just glue these onto something and paint them. And you can see this, the color is amazing still. And hold a little bit of that shadow, that's nice. Okay, that's good. I was thinking about uh, bringing some black ink in. We can still do that, but I think we're gonna see how we're doing here. Then we'll come out with the purples. Or we can come in and shadow with the ink later on. And then the purple will, uh, a transparent purple will, uh, show off the, sh the, sh the, oops, the shading of the uh, underneath the color itself. I'm starting to get a little bit of clogging, but let's see if we can get just those last uh, APC going and we're done with this. this. So I didn't want to waste paint. I made way too much for this batch. It was so I didn't expect this to go on so nicely. Let's see if I can get this brush or this airbrush cleaned out a little bit. I got the see so got bubbling in it. It means the getting a little bit of the brush. Or the uh, needles getting clogged a little bit. Let's put a little. Try to break these bubbles down. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna um, we'll do a little pre-shading with this. See how it works. We can always fix it later. Shaking up the ink. This is some old uh, 
Vallejo ink. Let's see. Sorry I'm doing this on camera, but something to, uh, if you're doing something like hobby stuff, this is not too bad to have in the background. And this is turning to gold. Weird. You can see the different color. Oh, I have way too much paint here still. Let's see. That's not changing color that much. I'm gonna have to dump the paint. And clean this brush. I'll be back in a second. I'm not gonna watch it. Let you watch after watch. Okay, that. we're back. See if we can do some shading with these uh, Vallejo ink. I got I've got the Grex out with a point two setup. And let's see how this looks. So we gotta be very probably running a little too much pressure. Let's see if we can pull it off though with just uh, technique. Nice. You can see that? Let's see if I can. That looks good. Let's do a little in the front. And a little in the back right there. Nice. side I'm gonna finish these up and I'll show them to you what they look like when they're unshaken okay I'm back again um, I noticed that you've, you know how paint when it dries it kind of fades away this is ink so this is not really a, a opaque color so um kind of to be a little more aggressive with it and I like how that little uh, line shows up There's a nice little uh, gradient and it still stays a little metallic. And that little uh, back area is probably like a hatch right there. Now I'm going to flip these over and just kind of go right down the middle. This is something really simple like that. Just give it some variation and some shade. I'll do the last one here. Got those. I'm gonna look at the tanks real quick. What can I go in there and pre-shade before we switch, flip these over and paint them silver again? I want to get under these guns again. Can you see that? Yeah. A little drama, draw, draw, a little more, a little more dramatic. Let's see, and this is a little more difficult in these little areas because I'm just trying to get right. It's a little darkness right in there just to put a shadow in. Maybe right here too. Add some. Interest. I like about the inks. Uh, it, it still looks slightly metallic underneath, but shaded. So it could be shadow. It could be heat damage. So I'm gonna get the rest of the uh, of this. We're gonna flip these over, paint them, let these dry. I'm really concerned about these with these uh, delicate turrets. And then um, we will flip these flyers over. 
I could probably do a little uh, shading on these bad boys too. Let's see here. I like the underneath, between the gun and the uh, and the uh, eyes, or uh, that's a little too much. And then I like the back end a little. It will shade later on. They're more like that. Let's see how I did that. And spin these a bit around. Let's do one more on there. And look at these back ends. Maybe let's kind of get in this little shadow area. There, I like that. Let's make sure I do it on camera, sorry. Wow, that was uh, five drops of ink that did all that uh, shade work. So this is probably just need one big old drop. And let's finish off that. I think we gotta do some uh, flipping and more painting. There we go. Anyway, under the wings. Just uh, trying to have fun. These aren't uh, competitive pieces, they're game pieces. But I want to, um, you know, it's always nice to kind of push the uh, level a little bit while you're painting. Good. We're the gut done. I'm going to uh, finish painting these, uh, get these flipped over, get the silver on those, let these cure a little bit right now, clear the ink out of the uh, Grex. And uh, we'll be back. Thanks for joining me. I'm back real quick, just showing how I'm shading these. I've flipped them over, painted them real quick. Uh, some of the pre shading stayed, but I want to make it a little more dramatic underneath. So I'm keeping a distance with the point too with the uh, Paleo ink. And just kind of letting it darken that area a little bit. And then go into the, uh, what do you call it, the pickle fork or whatever is on this thing. We'll do it one more time. Pretty nice. And also kind of shades the gun too when you do that also. So those are all done. And I'm gonna still got some ink left. Let's do these drop ships real quick. I'll show you what I wanted to do on these. Ooh. One fell off. So we can just take one of these. I want to get that area where the we'll have that dark, then just a little bit of shade there. And I want to do the bottom of the wings, just to give it a little dramatic, uh, make it a little more dramatic. Nice little shaded area. And we can go in later with the brush and bring it back if we want to, with a, like a paintbrush, like a paintbrush. So let's do light, lightly, get that darkened, then darken right there. Real simple. Uh, doing this 10 millimeter stuff. I can, I, mean, I can get in there deeper with a thing, but this is, like I said, this is for gameplay, not for competition. One last one. That light shading going. And then dark there. And the shades on the wings. And I ran out of paint right on that last piece. <laughs> this is add a drop. Like I said, this is not paint, this is ink. Put a couple drops in just in case. I'll take a look at everything. And there we go. 
So there we go. I think these are done. Maybe give these uh, this wing top of the wings a little bit of depth, right in that corner. Made it a little too much on that one. Let's see, they're on. Just a little. There we go, like that. I gotta remember that we're gonna be hitting with some purple ink soon too, so I don't wanna get too crazy with that. So uh, we are done with that, and our ABCs are done. So we got all of the uh, vehicles done. I might hold off on all the infantry till another part. So get the uh, Scourge vehicles done, and then I'll come in and do the UCM vehicles, and then uh, as a finale, we'll get the uh, um, ground troops done and that's it always remember before you hit your model with paint take uh, these little uh, practice runs I'm trying to make these a little more dramatic I like that black on there that spooky effect I think this looks, looks cool so uh, I'm gonna end this section here and we'll be back thanks Okay, we're back. I'm kind of doing like a, I guess a semi kind of camouflage tiger stripe on these. So I'm just going to go over the nose real quick. I'll show you how I'm doing these. And I'm using, um, this transparent purple ink by, uh, Daler and Round, Roundy. So I'm just going to go make sure I have ink going. Plenty of ink in the brush. Go over the front like that. We want to do a stripe. Do another stripe. They don't have to all be perfect either. Let's do one on the back end, and then we'll do a. Then we might have to go over them a little bit to bring that color. Oops, try not to touch these. There we go. And we're going to do a wash on these two to bring it all together. So, a simple tabletop paint job that looks like a um, box art. See if that works better. Do that. We'll flip it around and take that stripe. I can do different stripes on this. I have some chevrons across the uh, the body. You can see like, doing this.
I'm gonna do these wings. Let's do like a. There we go. You can see that how I'm doing that. That's kind of cool. So I got a stripe going back, following the wing itself. I'm gonna uh, be back in a second and show it to you. I've been painting on this way too long. Okay, we are back real quick. Um, so I guess this will be done with the base coats. Um, I'm probably gonna start doing some brush work. I want to get those. It looks like gold. I know on the uh, video or on the YouTube, he just threw some uh, sepia wash in there. These little uh, vents or whatever these are. But I want to do a little bit of gold or some brass, then do some. Uh, find some more details on these somewhere and then hit it with a black uh, probably an oil wash maybe not I just want to see what makes this pop it looks nice um, I mean it's looking good so far but you want all that deal detail to come out it's just kind of a there's a hodgepodge of chrome and a little bit of you know black shading and purple so I'm gonna end this part here so this will be the end of part five um, we'll come back and uh, work on these some more and maybe do some brush work on them. I think we're done with the airbrushes. So uh, with this, then uh, we'll bring the airbrushes back out when we start with the UCM and go from there. As usual, thank you for joining me. We'll see you in part six.